Hello, welcome to the lecture series on advanced VLSI design course. I will uh, take you through the VLSI design verification uh, process in this portion of uh, the lecture series. Uh, in la last uh, lecture, we discussed about various uh, techniques for the design verification. One was the si simulation or emulation based technique, which is uh, widely used in the industry. Other technique is the formal verification. And we also discussed what are the differences between a simulation based technique and formal verification techniques. As we discussed that in simulation based verification, we apply some uh, test vectors to the input of the, the design. So, this design is in the form of VSDL or Verilog code and then we check the output of the, the design and we verify with respect to or, or check with respect to the given specification or golden res reference uh, output. If there is a match in that case, we say that most likely design is, is correct, but because we cannot apply uh, test vectors exhaustively hence here we can never say that a, uh, this design has no bug. So, we can say only the presence of bug, but we can never say the absence of bug if you use simulation or emulation based way, um, uh, technique. Simulation is pretty slow process, maybe the speed is something like 1 to 5 hertz, whereas the, the emulation is the, the emulation of the, the design on some repro reprogrammable uh, logic like FPGA and that is much faster than the, the simulation and it is it's roughly 5 to 6 order of magnitude faster. But here the, the uh, main challenge is how to find out the corner cases which you can exercise and, and, and test. So, uh, it is uh, like corner case cases are can be missed and then here you may, may miss some of the design bugs. Simulation based verification technique is very good for the initial design debug because here if you apply the random vectors even you, you are likely to capture some of the bugs. Whereas, the formal verification technique uses some mathematical techniques to verify the design. So, now here what you, you, you need to do is you have to uh, supply the model of the or behavior of the design to the verifier and a set of properties and then it will tell you whether these set of properties are always respected by the, this uh, design or they fail. If they fail, then it gives you a trace of inputs under that it fails and that is known as counter example. So, like here say in order to model behavior of the, the design, we if it is a say sequential circuit, then we can model that as a finite state machine. And then what are the properties? Properties are something like if we want to design a traffic light controller then it is supposed to required not to give the green signal to both of the crossing roads. So, that is one of the property that we have to, to check whether there exist any state where in this can provide the, the green signal to both of the crossing roads. Other um, property could be like the, the, the signaling should follow some pattern like this red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green something like that. So, uh, so now, now, now here um, if the property passes in that case uh, we can say that uh, design is, is, is correct and this is, so this is equivalent to all case simulation and if it is equivalent to all case simulation in that case here there is no concern about the corner case which can be be missed uh, uh, say in, in simulation based verification now here so there is no corner case with respect to given property hence we 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 say that this this is a always always correct for a given property now here the the challenge is to find out the complete properties of a given design if you ca can verify for all the properties in that case here you can say that the, this design is, is correct in all respect and we can fairly rely on that. So, now here the, the what are the various challenges we have. So, this uh, as I said that formal technique is based on mathematical reasoning 
and for the mathematical reasoning here we use the, the boolean uh, functions or boolean algebra that is a, a propositional logic. The, and in order to manu, manipulate this here, we use a either satisfiability checker or, or, or binary decision diagrams. Uh, we also use the, the first order lo, logic, uh, logic or, or higher order logic for the um, theorem proving. So, as I also mentioned in the, the last lecture that there are three kind of uh, techniques we use in the formal verification. One is the, the deductive verification. Deductive verification uses axioms and, and theorems to prove the correctness of, of design. So, it is like here uh, you, you are either you, you prove this uh, Pythagoras theorem mathematically or you, you take a scale and, and measure the both of the arms and then, then verify that. So, now we, you, we need to use a set of axioms like if you want to verify an adder in that case here its specification can be defined at, at um, more abstract way like uh, in, in al uh, algebraic form. So, now if you add say 2 bit 1 1 then what would be the, the out, output and, and so now here if you have bit stream in that case here what would be the, the, the value of uh, uh, integer value of that bit stream and then if you are adding 2, two bit stream in that case here what would be the outcome of that. So, that is at, at higher level of, level of abstraction and then you, ha you have implementation of your design and you want to ve verify wh whether it gives you the, the, the same mathematical uh, answer or not. So, now deductive verification as it uses axioms and, and theorems and then you have to, to use that in certain uh, way. So, you need manual intervention in this, this technique is semi automatic te technique and it is uh, it is bit difficult and more time consuming. The another technique is, is called as model checking in that you model your, your, your design like here uh, if it is a sequential circuit as a finite state machine and then here you, you identify some of the, the properties. Uh, and that you, you mathematically express and then you have to verify the, the, those properties on that given model checker. It is worth to mention that the inventor of, of, of model checker got Turing award very recently. So, you can see the, 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 effective, uh, no, re, the effectiveness of the, the technique. So, now the, this technique is, is almost fully automatic technique. So, that, that means here you, you need to supply the model say as a Verilog or VHDL code. So, now, now your, your verifier will extract the finite state machine from your Verilog or VHDL code and then you express properties in terms of uh, some uh, mathematical logic and, and now, now here your verifier will check whether that property is respected all the time or not. So, now, now here the challenge is uh, the number of states are exploding and then in order to complete the verification process in, in reasonable time here we use the symbolic algorithm like here we use binary decision diagram to, to uh, manipulate uh, these uh, systems. The third technique is, is equivalence checking. So, equivalence checking is like here checking of the equivalence of two designs. So, if you have two design in that case here both of the designs are supposed to produce the same output if you apply same primary input. So, now here like for example, if you uh, design a, a, an adder that may be say a ripple carry adder which is a cost effective in terms of area and you verified that with respect to, to the, the given specification that is mathematical specification you have uh, may be you using the, the deductive verification uh, technique. And after that, so now, now, now here you minimize uh, optimize that for say timing or something else. So, now you have you have uh, another design say uh, carry lo look ahead adder which is more more optimized for the, the timing. So, now you have one ripple carry adder another um, say carry look ahead adder. Ripple carry adder is already verified and now, now if you prove the equivalence of the carry look ahead adder with the ripple carry adder in that case here you can say that both of the, the designs uh, are uh, respecting the, the specification. So, if uh, the, this equivalence checking is, is again uh, another technique and this is fairly automa automatic technique. So, model checking and, and equivalence checking are the fairly automatic uh, techniques. Uh, whereas, the de deductive verification is sem semi automatic technique and industry always prefer to 
have a technique that is fairly automatic, so that here human error cannot be, be introduced in that. So, uh, now here first I will start from the, the combinational e uh, equivalence checking and, and so uh, then again there are two parts, one is the combinational equivalence, equivalence checking and sequential equivalence checking. So, first I will start with the sequ combinational equivalence checking, then we will consider the, the theorem, we will consider a model checker or, or a property checker. So, today's in, in the, the ASIC design flow, if you look at the use of the, the combinational equivalence checking then you will find almost everywhere the uh, combinational equivalence checker is being used. So, this design flow we discussed earlier that here you start from the, uh, the RTL design, you synthesize that you will get obtain the gate level net list, then you need to check whether your obtained gate level net list is, is, is uh, equivalent to the your RTL design or not. Then you do the testability analysis and you insert the, the design for testability. So, after DFT in insertion again you need to check whether your get level net list is, is functionally equivalent to the, the synthesized get level net list or not. The after that you insert I O or and then you do the, the placement routing and then so and then you, you introduce the clock tree at every stage you have to check whether your new transform alter the functionality or not. So, that, that, that means here uh, before transformation and after transformation uh, the, the functionality remain equivalent or not. So, now, now you, you can see the, the use of equivalence ch checker in today's design. So, as I said that here this combinational equivalence checker is currently the most practical and pervasive uh, equivalence technique we have. It can, it is almost fully automatic technique. So, that means it is put push button kind, kind of, of job. You say that I uh, submit two designs and, and say now here check for the equivalence. It will tell you whether both of the designs are equivalent or not. If they are not equivalent in that case, it will return you the, the trace or, or input vector that uh, can give produce the different output from the two different designs. Now, uh, the combinational equivalence checker can also handle the millions of, of gates. So, that means here you can do almost the full chip veri verification. So, that means here uh, if you have, have millions of gate in one design, millions of gate in, uh, in another design and if you want to check whether both of the designs are equivalent or not. So, you can almost handle, handle the, the full, full designs. Problems. So, combinational equivalence checker is still a, a small portion most of the, the circuits are, are sequential circuits and now the, the, the if now when you go for the, the sequential equivalence checker in that ca ca case here your design uh, space explodes in order to handle that here one of the ways most of the, the, the people do use is you, you can formulate a, or convert the, the sequential equivalence checker problem as a combinational equivalence checker and then use the, the conventional uh, combinational equivalence checker to check that design. So, the, if you look at the, the current uh, industry offering for, for combinational equivalence checker, in that case here you will see wide variety of, of tools are ava available like here formality from syn synopsis, conformal suit from the cadence, formal pro from the mentor uh, graphics. So, uh, and the, the, these tools have the enormous capability. So, that means they can handle several million gate, gate level uh, net list and they have the, the, the comprehensive debug, debug capability that means here you can localize the, the bug. So, that means here why the, the, these two designs are, are different where the, the bug is and some of the tools have the what if kind of uh, capability as well. So, now here uh, let us more look closely the Combine, uh, or equivalence checker problem, what means uh, we want and, and how this is being done. So, for the combinational equivalence checker here you have two designs, design A and design B and when I uh, apply some input to design A and design B here, these two designs are supposed to produce the same output. If they are producing different output in that ca case here, both of the designs are not equivalent. Now, the question is maybe for some of the, the in, in inputs, two designs are can be equivalent, but for some other input, two designs are, are, are not equivalent. So, now here one of the, the ways is that we need to find out or, or we need to, to check whether for all the possible inputs, both of the designs are producing the same output or not. Like here as I, uh, as I discussed in the, in the last uh, lecture, 
if I, I have an OR gate and XOR gate. So, say I want to implement XOR gate and by mistake I, I have implemented OR gate. Now, here if you, I want to verify in that case here for 3 uh, inputs out of 4 inputs for the 2 input a uh, OR or XOR gate both of the designs are producing the same output. And if I am checking for the, those 3 inputs in that case here I will say that, that both of the designs are, are equivalent. Right. So, like here 0 0 0 1 1 0 OR and XOR will produce the same output. So, now yeah, the, the complexity is we need to check for all the input and as I mentioned that here we cannot exhaustively che check that because here the, the this application of input and, and, and getting the output and checking whether outputs are same or not that is that, that, that's called as simulation based verification. So, now here, but what we want we want to verify these two design that should give me the, the capability that both of the designs it is like here uh, for all case uh, simulation. So, now the, the one of the good thing with the uh, equivalence uh, checker is that we have seen earlier as well that this can be applied at one level of abstraction or across the, 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 the level of abstraction. So, that means here you can check the gate level net list with respect to RTL, RTL with respect to, to gate level net list or, or RTL with respect to RTL gate level net list we say with gate level, level net list gate level net list with, with, with your transistor implementation and so on and so forth. So, and that, that we have seen in uh, that we are almost at every stage in the, the design transformation we use equivalence checker. So, let us go, go little bit more inside the theory of, of equivalence checker. So, say if you have these two designs design A and design B and I want to check because here the, these two designs are uh, these two designs look differently uh, if you if you look at uh, the, the structure, but now here the, the question is if you uh, want to check the, the, the correctness of these two designs or equivalence of these two designs in that case here you have to say that for all possible uh, in inputs here output of these two designs should be same in that case we can say that, that both of the designs are same. So, now, now one, one of the ways is that you, you generate the, the truth table and check the, the entries in the truth table, but now here say assume I, I have 100 inputs to a design then you need to have 2 raise to the power 100, 2 raise to the power, power 100 entry in the, the, the truth table and so now, now first thing is you have to store that and 2 raise to the power 100 is roughly 10 raise to the power 30. So, that means here 10 raise to the power 30 storage location at least you, you need. So, that, that means here you cannot fit your, your total truth table in the in the, the uh, your storage space and hence that that is uh, impractical. So, now here you have to have some way that can represent that can have unique representation of this circuit that can have unique representation of this circuit. So, that means here if both of the functions are, are equivalent in that case here their unique representation must be same and now I can check that that unique unique representation. So, the, the other thing, thing like here you can say that that truth table is unique, but this is not manageable this is not compact. So, I have to I want to have representation which is compact and easy to manipulate. So, these are the, the, the two requirement and we will we'll see that. So, so binary decision diagram is, is one, one of them. So, now here then there, there are two ways to verify the equivalence of these two designs. So, say this is one design, this is another design. One of the, the way, way is you have design A, you have design uh, 2 and then you, you need to check the, the both of the, the designs. So, now here if I say I XOR the output of these two output should always remain 0. right? So, so for all possible inputs output should always be 0 here if I XOR these two. Now, if I find out some way some set of input for which if the output of this XOR gate is 1 in that case I can say both of the designs are not equivalent and that that in input is known as the counter example. So, that here for that input both of the designs are, are producing the, the different output. Now, how I can how I can do that? 
So, one of the, the, the technique is, is the, these are the set based technique or ATB PG based technique. So, that means here in set based technique we search a input assignment that can give different output for these two different designs uh, and now here sets so of say three set problem is, is, is NP complete problem. So, now here you, you need to use heuristic in order to, to solve this in reasonable time we can use the branch and bound in that you can assign some input you propagate uh, the, those, those input and check whether you are able to get, get the, the output or not if there, if there is a conflict in that case you have to backtrack and, uh, and until, until you, you, you succeed. In the same way, way, way here you can use the, the, the ATPG and, and what ATPG do is like here this is design 1 and, and, and this, this is design 2 and now, now here what you want because for a given input output is always 0. So, this is corresponds to that output is, is always stuck to logic 0. right? So, now, now here I need to test need to generate a, a vector. So, I need to generate a vector that can produce output 1 here. If I can produce output 1 here in that case I can distinguish the, the behavior of two, two designs. So, now, now means I can use the, the, the automatic test pattern generator generation techniques. There are various techniques like here D algorithm, PODEM algorithm, FAN algorithm. In this series of lecture I cover ATPG algorithm. In, in VLSI test lecture series. So, uh, you, you can refer to that I do not want to re, uh, repeat that. So, now you, you want to find out a set of input that can produce output 1 here. If you can obtain the, uh, uh, that set of vector in that case here you can say that the both of the design means that is at least one uh, set of vector that produces two different different outputs from these two different designs. Hence, these two designs are not equivalent. So, whether you, you formulate this as a set problem or you formulate this as a as an ATPC problem in both of the, the, the cases the, the challenges are that most of the, the time finding out this assignment is complete problems. Hence, here you need to exercise lot of inputs before saying See, generation of test vector is easier, but here saying that the, this test vector does not exist is the most difficult problem. And now here, so uh, and in this case when both of the, the, the designs design A and design B are equivalent in that case here, there should not be any uh, or there does not exist any test vector that produce output 1 here. Right. So, so now, now, now here in order to, to, to prove that here typically you need to explore the significant portion of, of input space. So, and, and the, so that, the, that means here the, the timing com complexity is exponential. So, now one of the, the way is as I, as I mentioned earlier is that we can use either set based te techniques or ATP based techniques in that you want to find out a set of input that can produce two different outputs from two different designs. If there exists a such vector in that case here we can say both of the designs are not equivalent otherwise we say that the both of the designs are absolutely equivalent. So, that is the, 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 the challenge. Other approach is the functional approach I uh, as I explained earlier as well that if you can represent the functionality of your design by unique representation. So, as I said the, the, the truth table is one of the unique representation, but it is not economical in terms of storage space. And so, now, now, now here you, we need to have a unique representation that is compact. So, and now here so uh, if both of the designs are functionally equivalent, I can uh, have the unique representation of both of the designs and then I can compare. So, if they, there is a match in that case we can say both of the designs are equivalent or both of the designs are not equivalent. So, now here functional approach I, I will discuss little bit more in detail. So, now here say these are the, the two designs design T 1 and design T 2. If these two designs are, are absolutely equivalent in that case you, 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 they are unique representation or canonical form of representation should be identical 
and that should be comp compact and binary decision diagram is, is one of the compact way of representation that is graphical representation of a truth table. So, now here the this is the binary decision diagram wherein you have the in inputs and now here based on say say like here if, if a is some you know, 1 b is 1 in that case here output would be b 0 and if a is 1 and, and b is, is 0 and, and c is 0 then output would be 1. So, now, now, now here this way I can read. So, now here from this I, I generate the, the binary decision diagram for this circuit. I generate the binary decision diagram for this circuit if then here I can match these two graphs. So, this is graphical representation. So, I can match these two graphs. So, how I match the, these two graphs? I have to match node by node edge by edge. So, now, now here it has 5 nodes and 5 edges and here at it has 5 nodes and 5 edges. I, I can come uh, match these uh, nodes and edges and if they are, they are equivalent in that case here I can say that both of the designs are equivalent. So, we can say that functions are, are equal if and only if the, the representation are identical. In this year, we are never enumerating the, the, the explicit function values. We are just, just generating a compact representation and then we are comparing that. We also exploit the, the, the structure and, and, and regularity in the structure. So, now here let us come to this point how you, you obtain the binary, de binary decision diagram. So, binary de as I said that binary decision diagram is a representation graphical representation of a, a circuit or Boolean function. So, now here say say my, my Boolean function is function of, of some input x 1, x 2, uh, x i, x n. Now, this function I can use the Shannon's decomposition theorem. I can see the, this function is evaluated to 0 or 1 based on the value of these variable x 1 to x n. So, say I, I, I decompose this function with respect to some variable say x i. So, now here I, ca I can write this, this, this using the Shannon expansion theorem x i into f of all the varia variable with x i equal to 1 and x n. So, th this is the, the, the evaluation of function when x i is equal to 1 plus x i bar because x i can also take the, 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 the value 0 f f of x 1 x i is equal to 0 x n. So, now here I, I can represent the, the, the this is the value of function when x i equal to 1. So, I can represent this function as x i f of x i plus x i bar f of x i bar. So, f of x i is the, 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 the value of function when x i equal to 1, f of x i bar is the value of function when x i equal to 0. So, this way if, if I can represent my function in that case here, I can generate a graph wherein x i is one node and so x i is, is, is my node and now here this is my, my function f of x i, it will evaluate to this one. This is my function f of x i uh, x i bar. When I get 1, then it will go, go to evaluate this one. When I get 0, this, this will go to evaluate this function f of x i bar. Now, here again this, this function will have all variable x 1, x 2, x n except x i. In the same way, this will have all variable from x 1 to x n except x i. So, now again I can decompose that with respect to uh, another variable say x j. So, now, now here ag again I, I can say the, 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 this is x j and I will find out a function that is x i x j and then here there would be a function of x i x j bar and this way, way, way I, I keep on, on expanding this and I will get the binary decision tree. So, the, the, this would be a binary tree because every from every node there can be two branches. So, how this uh, binary decision tree is generated? Let us say the, this is my function that is represented by this truth table. Now, it has three variable x 1, x 2, x 3, x n. So, I start from a variable x i and assume that I, I evaluate my function in given order of variable and that order of variable say I decided x 1, x 2, x 3. So, now here if I, I have x 1 in that case, case here either I x 1 can be 1 or 0. If I x 1 is 1 in that case here this would be the, the, the function and if, if x 1 is 0 in that case this would be the function. So, now here when say x now you evaluate with respect to x 2 and then here 
you you will have an x 2 equal to 1, this would be the function when x 1 x 2 is equal to 0, then this would be the function. Now, here again you, you, you have only one variable and evaluate with respect to x 3. So, now when you have x 1 equal to 1, x 2 equal to 1, x 3 equal to 1, then the, the, the output is, is 0. So, that is corresponding to this entry. So, now here every path in this binary decision tree represents one entry in the truth table. Now, you can say that what we achieve out of this here we have number of passes e e equal to the, the, the same number of entries that we have in the truth table and for the large number of inputs it is not possible to store these things. Yes, that is true, but there are some ways to minimize this I will discuss those how you can, can minimize. So, now here in, in this truth table you have only uh, 8 entries whereas, here if you if you see then you have 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 total 15 nodes right and 15 nodes and, and 15 aces. So, now, now here you you uh, means this binary decision trees is much more bigger than, than your truth table. Now, here the, the question is how you can minimize that. So, there are there are couple of properties for um, binary decision tree that here in in every path the variables should be followed in the in, in some particular order they, they, there cannot be, be be haphazard that here somewhere you have you have x 1 x 2 x 3 somewhere you have x 1 x 3 x x 2. So, they this they should follow some, some order. So, this order x 1 x 2 x 3 is ok, x 1 x 3 is ok, but here this cannot be, be, be x 1 x 3 x 2. So, the, the this order is, is, is not not correct this order is, is not correct. Binary decision trait. So, now here no conflicting variable assignment can be there and now here binary a decision di diagrams are, are, are easy to manipulate. So, now the, the qu question is how to minimize that. You know that there is a lot of redu redundancy in the, this uh, binary de decision tree. There are um, couple of nodes which are storing the same value like here if you lo look at the leaf node they are storing either 0 or 1, but they, there are total 8 number of nodes and they are storing only 2 values. So, if there are 2 nodes in that case here there is no point to store at, uh, uh, these two values at again and again or, or, or in redundant fashion. So, you can reduce that. So, now one of the way is that you, you merge the equivalent leave nodes nodes. Leave nodes are, are the nodes which are, are storing always 0 or, or 1 value right. So, now, now here if you if you merge these two in that case you can say there is a significant reduction in the in the, the binary decision tree and now this become a binary decision diagram or binary decision graph. So, here it has 15 nodes and now you, you reduce that to 9 nodes. Again there are couple of nodes which have the same binary decision tree below the, that node. So, like here if you look at this node x and this node x here both have the, the, the similar kind, kind of binary decision trees in both of the branches. So, now here there is no point to store these two nodes differently. So, what we can do is we can merge the, the, these two, two nodes. So, now, now what you need to do is you need to, to bring in this branch here. So, when you, you merge these two then here this node has no role to do and hence I can, can remove the, the, this node. So, now in this diagram if, if you look at the, these are the, the two nodes say x 1 and, and, and this is x 2. So, no this x 3, this x 3, this, this, this x 3, these three uh, uh, nodes are, are, are evaluating in the, the same fashion in that case they are, we, we uh, call the, these nodes as isomorphic nodes and you merge those isomorphic nodes. So, now, now here once you merge isomorphic nodes you, you can again re, uh, re reduce that. Now, again look at whether there is a possibility to, to reduce it further or not. So, now, now if, if you look at there, there is still possibility to, to, to reduce this further. Now, if you look at these two nodes, when both of the edges are, are going to the same node, what does that mean? That means that irrespective of what is the value of x, your function will evaluate in the same way. So, that means x does not have any role in decision making process. Hence, why I need to have x in the, the diagram itself, I can remove that x. So, now here you remove this x and then here you, you bring in these in edges to x to y and now, so now, now here in this diagram if you look at that now, now this x 3 to, to 0 here you have both of the, the edges going to that 
and from here x 2 to 0 you have both of the edges going to that. So, now, now here you can you can you can see that you can minimize this binary decision diagram binary decision tree which initially had 15 nodes and 15 edges to like here 5 nodes and 5 edges. So, there is a there is a significant reduction from this binary decision diagram to binary binary decision tree and this binary this is known as reduce because here we applied all three re reduction techniques. So, this is reduced the diagram and we also decided the, the order of variables hence this is known as reduced order binary decision diagram and reduced de order de binary decision diagram always represent the canonical form of a given boolean function or a circuit and that that, that is the, 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 the simplest form. So, the another thing is because here uh, if you change the order of, of, of variable in that case here the the shape and, and, and size of, of uh, the binary decision diagram will change, but still this will give you the, the same unique representation or uh, for, for a given function or given circuit that will have the same shape and size uh, for a given order of variable. If you look at there, there is some function like here if it is a constant then you will have only one node if it is variable in that case you will have this kind of nodes if it is a typical function then you will have this kind of of say say just uh, say generate some circuit if it is something symmetrical function in that case here your binary decision diagram will also be be symmetrical one so these are are, are couple of examples if you have say circuit like here four input adder in that case here you have 4 and 4 8 inputs and then here output a would be 4 input uh, 4 bit sum output and 1 bit carry outputs of 5 outputs. So, if you generate the binary decision diagram in that case here binary decision di diagram will look like this one. So, for say for 4 in, in, in input it is uh, has 31 nodes and if you go for 64 input in that case here the number of nodes we, uh, you will have is 571. So, now here with respect to the, the input the growth is, is linear one. As I said that here shape and size depends on the, the, the order of variable. So, now here say uh, for this function here if I take the order of variable uh, as a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 a 3 b 3 in that case here this would be the binary reduced order binary decision diagram. If you use the, the a 1 a 2 a 3 b 1 b 2 b 3 as order in that case you can see the, the, the reduced order binary decision di diagram would be much fatter and it will have more number of nodes and edges. So, now here see what you want when you want to generate a, a, a ROBDD uh, that represents the canonical form. So, so now and after that if the you, you need to generate for one design and another design and you want to compare node by node edge by edges. So, now, now what you want is that the number of nodes and number of edges should be as small as possible. So, that it will take less time in, in comparison and it will take less space in uh, order to store the, the these uh, nodes. So, now it is very important to find out a good order of variable and the, the finding out the, the good order of variable is an intractable pro problem and hence here we need to use couple of heuristics to, to find out the good uh, order of variable. There are there are various various heuristics. Those are like here aesthetic heuristic that you can apply on using the the fa fan in of the gate uh, aesthetically, or you ca can apply the the dynamic ordering. So I will I will discuss here dynamic ordering, which is being ma, ma often used in the in the, the practical circuit. So one of the the way way is that dynamically. So so when you are when you are generating the the ROBDD, what you, you need to do is you have to check the, the, the swap the adjacent variables. So, and, and check whether the, the ROBDD is, is getting reduced or not. So, so that it can, can come out from the, the localized effect. So, you add, delete or, or alter only the nodes which, which are labeled to, to the, the, the swapping. So, now, now here say I, I want to, to, to swap the variable a 1 and, and, and no b 1 and b 2 in that case, case here all the nodes which are labeled by, by b 1 and b 2 here they, they, they can be, be some new nodes can be, be introduced or, or, or some nodes can be, be deleted. 
So, uh, and now, now and if they, they, there is a reduction in the, the size here we keep that order otherwise here we keep the previous order. So, now, now here by, by swapping, swapping the, 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 these two here you can see difference in the ROBDDs. If there is a reduction we, we keep the, the, the newer order otherwise we, we go back to the previous order. So, like, like here other techniques are like here shifting. So, there we, we uh, which was proposed by uh, Richard Ruddell from the synopsis. So, what it does is it periodically attempt to improve the ordering of the, the variables. So, now, now here this move each variable from the, the, the given location to all other locations and find out the best place of that variable. Best place is the place where it result into the, the, the reduced R, ROBDD. So, and, and this is where uh, though this is very time consuming, but it is very effective technique. So, how it, it works? Say now, now uh, this is my, my ROBDD. Now, I, I want to find out the, the, the best place for variable B 1. So, what I will do is I start to shifting this from B 1 to B 3 here this side and, and B 1 to A 1 this side and I will, uh, I will find out the place where it result into the smallest BDD the, and, and I, I will fix it there. So, this is greedy approach. So, I fix it there and then I, I will work with the, the other variables. I would not change the, 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 the order of the, the, this variable. So, now here if you move to, to the, the next location, shift to the next location in that case here, this would be the BDD. Then if you, you shift this to the third position B 3 in that case here, this would be the BDD. Then, then you go up, you move to, to A, A 3, then A 2, then A 1. So, now, now here when you go to, to A, A 2 in that case here, this would be the, the BDD and then if you go to, to, to A 1, then this would be the, the BDD. So, now these two BDDs are, are, are the smallest one. So, now you will fix the, the location or, or order of A 2 at second loop position or at the first position and once it is fixed, then it is frozen, you, you are not allowed to change that. So, now, now here this way you can find out the, 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 the order, order of variable. So, now here finding out optimal order of variable is, is, is very difficult that is NP complete problem, but now here in for most of the functions we can find out the, the ROBDD in, in reasonable time and algorithm remains practical up to say 1 million nodes in, 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 in ordered binary, binary decision diagram. If you look at some fang li like here how the, the functions are changing or sensitive to, to order of variable like here ALU it has very high sensitivity. In the best case, you will have with respect to increase in the variable, there can, can be, be, be a linear uh, increase or there can be a exponential in, increase in the shape and si in the size of, of a ROBDD. Whereas, symmetrical functions are not sensitive at all, it means it, it does not matter what uh, order of variable you are choosing. For multiplication, though here the, the sensitivity is low, but it, the, the growth is always exponential. So, um, with respect to incre increase in the number of inputs. This is the, the, the story I, I told you how to construct RO, RO BDD. So, from a given truth table. So, now from the truth table, I, I showed you that how you can construct the, the binary decision tree and, and construct the RO and minimize that and get the ROBDD, but the size of binary decision tree is much bigger than the, the truth table. So, that is that is impractical. So, this was just to illustrate you how to do that. In practical, we do not do not do like that. In practice, say the, the, this is circuit, you know this is a NAND NAND implementation of an XOR gate. So, in practice here we apply function on, on R, ROBDDs. Or, or BDDs and then we ge generate the, the BDD by graphical manipulation or mathematical manipulation on these BDDs. So, now here say the BDD of x 1 we know this is one variable, BDD of x 2 we know this is another variable. So, we know the, the BDD of this. Now, you have you want to have BDD at the output in that case you apply the NAND functionality on that and, and generate the, the, the BDD. So, now here just by graphical manipulation we obtain this one and then again you apply the graphical manipulation and finally, you will get this BDD. And now here dynamically we keep on applying the, the dynamic variable ordering and then we, we re restrict the, the explosion of BDD to, to certain extent. So, now if you have BDD 
you can I mean say if you have function or two designs you can generate BDD and then then you you, you can compare the, these two BDDs and if they are equivalent in that case you can say that bo both of the circuits are equivalent. Now, in general the so, and BDDs I mean say we cannot handle BDDs more than more than a million nodes or so. So, now here if the, the circuit is much bigger what to do that with that we cannot we, we, we cannot even store the BDD. So, now uh, means what you need to do is you need to partition BDDs and, and now so that means for that you need to decompose your, your, your function into smaller pieces and generate the, the BDD for that and compare the, the, these BDDs at some internal points. So, now if this is your, your, your design say f this is another design f days you find out the, the internal equivalent points and then you, you have to generate BDD for all these in internal points and, and compare that. So, li li like here these are the, the two functions the uh, one is f and g. So, now, now you decompose in, in sub, sub functions f 1, f 2 and g 1, g 2 and now here you have to compare at the, the, the intermediate points f and, and, and no z and, and z and then you, you compare it at g and g. So, now, now here you have to define the cut points these are the, the structurally equivalent uh, cut points and the, the, then you, you have to verify that with the, this z and z are, are equal. So, that means here this f 1 and c 1 are equivalent and then here in terms of you, you generate the BDD of f 2 in terms of z and y and here you, you also generate the, the BDD for, for z 2 in terms of z and y and then com, compare that. So, the, the, this way you can, can verify the, the combinational logic. Now, generally in reality we do not have combinational circuits, we have sequential circuits. So, now how to verify the sequential circuits that is the, the, the biggest challenge and one of the ways you have to formulate that sequential equivalence checking problem into combinational equivalence checking. How I can do that? Say th this is my, my sequential circuit that has some combinational part and, and some flip flop to store the, the, the state variable and then there are some input and, and, and some primary output this is primary out output this is primary input. How I can, can convert this circuit into a equivalent combination logic? See here this circuit will behave differently in different cycles. So, now here I if I, I can, can convert the entire circuit into to its behavior in, in as a combination logic. So, initially say the, the flip flop may have some value then this is I am getting some value from the flip flop this is primary input and this will behave and this will produce some output that goes to flip flop. Now, next time this output generated by this one here it will it will go go to the, the same combinational logic as it is this would be the output and then you will get new output. And then again the output produced by this again it goes to the combinational logic right and it will produce some output and, and will get, get some input from the primary input. So, now if I, I expand this for couple of time frame in that case here you can say that this is equivalent to the, the, the combinational circuit which is represented here for given number of time frames. So, now here this is equivalent functional equivalent of sequential circuit for given number of, of time frames. So, now, now if you expand this, the, this uh, using the time frame expansion into combinational logic, your combinational logic is, is replicated n times if you have expanded this n times and now the, the complexity of this combinational logic will be n times and number of number of inputs will also be, be increased by n times. So, now, now your, your combinational lo lo logic would be much bigger, but still you can use the, the, the combinational equivalence checking for, for that. Now, here the, the only the problem is the, the circuit is, is too large and now this can give you guarantee up to certain number of time frames, it cannot give you guarantee in, in infinitely uh, long sequences. Other uh, way to, to check the, the sequential logic is you have say uh, generally you, you know we express a sequential circuit or we can model sequential circuit using state diagram. So, say this might be the, the state diagram of a combinational uh, or, or a sequ sorry, sequential circuit. So, if you have 
stir diagram of two machines. Now, you want to if these two machines are equivalent in that case here, they must have isomorphic state transition graph. State tra transition graph is, is, is just simply your, your finite state machine. So, now what you need to do, do is you have to check whether the two, two machines are, are isomorphic or not. Say you have one machine as this one, another machine, machine as this one m 1 and m 2, these are not isomorphic. So, means by looking at this you can say that these two machines are not isomorphic, hence you can say that the, these two machine, uh, machines are not equivalent, but that is not the case. So, what you can do is there are a uh, state minimization technique you must have studied that. So, now you can apply the, the, the state minimization technique you can reduce the, the this state diagram into uh, this machine and now if, if you look at the, the reduced machine m 1 minimize machine m 1 and machine m 2 in that case. Now, now these two machines are isomorphic you can compare node by node edge by edge and so now. now the, the machines are isomorphic if you can generate another machine by simply re, relabeling the states. So, if I can relabel this state 1 dot dot 2, so that because this is obtained by merger of these two, two states in by as 1 in that case both of the machines are, are, are absolutely equivalent and hence you can say these two machines are equivalent. This is this is another way to, to prove that. So, what you need to do is you have to, to reduce the, the both of the, the state machines and then you check the isomorphism of the reduced state ma machines of two designs. Yeah, so, today we discussed about combinational equivalence checking and how we can use the combinational equivalence checking for the, the sequential circuits as well. Couple of techniques we, we discussed like here ex uh, time frame expansion model as well as the uh, isomorphism of two state machines and we have also seen that how we can use binary decision diagrams to see the uh, to check the, the equivalence. So, with this I complete today's lecture here and we will discuss the remaining portion of equivalence checking and uh, property checking or model checking in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Good day.